do you guys know what's going on here? Joe, <laughs> over to you, pal. Because Where we're, do you we're want struggling to a little bit. We're struggling a little bit. Well, like the, the Stroman news seems like it was about a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I think obviously the hot news where you're going is with the Houston Astros deal. Uh, we, we first heard Biagini's name, then we heard Sanchez's name attached, and we were literally live on the show as things continued to come through. I just feel that the Blue Jays sold low on Aaron Sanchez. I have been a big proponent of him going out there every fifth day from now to the end of the season. I think we finally have seen him coming around a little bit lately. Maybe not the 2016 ERA title, Aaron Sanchez, but I've been seeing glimpses of some goodness. And he has a lot of talent. And if he ever overcomes whatever's going on with these fingers, he can be a very good talent. I thought if they gave him that opportunity till the end of this season and then maybe explore trade possibilities this winter, it would only be one pennant run for the contender. But I think he would have been worth a lot more. Derek Fisher, jury's still out. He's just new to the big leagues. Yeah, and with apologies to local comedy clubs that'll be looking for a new headliner, Joe Biagini is <laughs> really a dime a dozen in Major League Baseball, right? He's a reliever that you can go and, and get anywhere. Aaron Sanchez, for me, to your point, Joe, is somebody that I think the Blue Jays did sell low on. I wonder if there was a bit of a fracture in the relationship there over the fingernail stuff over the last couple of years. And this is the one team, the Houston Astros, when you look at what they have done with the likes of Justin Verlander, mm -hmm. Garrett Cole is going to strike out approximately 1,000 hitters this year. <laughs> Their ability to turn pitchers around or to enhance pitchers, if this is the team that does that, we're going to be squawking about it here in Toronto. And you may not have heard of Kel Stevenson. I saw him play a lot in Grapefruit League. He's just a young kid, the lower minor leagues. Derek Fisher is a bit piece, at least so far in a small sample size over multiple times, multiple opportunities in the big leagues with Houston. I don't understand why you have to give away a young talent. To it, add to it. To add to this to this package. Right. I, I do think that there's a function here for both Biagini and Sanchez in Houston. It surprised me they had to give away a third piece. To me, this seems like a big guts move by Blue Jays management. Listen, we were just talking about how they were already under fire in this city. They were put in a bad situation right off the top. And I've had a lot of leeway because of the situation that they were put in. But to me, to go out and trade all of these players and not get a top 100 piece back, at least as of right now, Fisher used to be top 100 prospect. Not that anymore. It seems to me like they have put their reputation on the line. You trade in Aaron Sanchez, whatever he is now, we have all seen a flash of real brilliance from him. You're putting a lot on the line that a, that a Fisher will work out or perhaps that a Simeon Woods Richardson will work out. Because I think that's what they've done here. They've put a lot on the line in the hopes that someone will work out. One of the most difficult things about our line of work or even cheering for a baseball team is simply working off of what we know now. So we sit here and we have to be careful not to assume stasis, right? So they are acquiring all of these young arms. They have drafted and developed predominantly in the middle infield. We know that 10 guys can't play shortstop for this team <laughs> down the road, so they're going to move them around the field. They are also going to use some of these pieces, you would think, to go out when the time is right. And I don't know if the 1920 offseason is the right time. It may be a little early. But at some point within the next 18 months, you would think they're going to package some of these guys to go and get major league talent, whether that is an upper rotation arm, a mid-rotation arm. I still think they need help. They've got quantity in arms, but I think they're going to use some of that quantity to go and get guys who are already making a major league salary, who have already accomplished some things in, in the big leagues. Evaluations vary, too. And we've talked about a lot of the analytics in baseball now, and there are a lot of public analytics. We can all go to the websites and dig up all kinds of numbers. Mm -hmm. But then teams have their own things as well, all of their own information. And I think in this case, that's the only thing I can come up with is that the Blue Jays ranked or rated a lot of these players higher than others did. Now, for someone not to be on a top 100, I think, too, sometimes that varies. Like, Kay could go have five good starts in Buffalo and all of a sudden slip into the top 100 now. But 
Obviously, there is something that the Blue Jays have seen, that their scouts have seen. I thought more would come originally for the Stroman trade. But at the same time, we talked about Sanchez, his value coming down. I think we also value the players that we see more mm -hmm. a little higher. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, I'm thinking around Major League Baseball, and I've heard from some teams, people that I know, the value on Stroman wasn't as high as I had thought originally. I was shocked to hear that, but it's true. See, the biggest question for me is not just the moves, the timing. Right? You do the Stroman deal a little bit before the deadline, saying that the value isn't going to change. Then Trevor Bauer moves, and you or say... Hope it, or hoping the value doesn't change. Or hoping the value doesn't change, and Trevor Bauer moves, and maybe that changes that conversation. Or the Yankees look at the fact that Houston's going all in. Maybe they get a little bit more desperate. And with Aaron Sanchez, I mean, the value couldn't be lower. If you moved him in the offseason or next year, you couldn't get any less. So... <laughs> Did they misread the market in terms of the timing of when they've made the moves? And having one deadline, has that changed the equation? Having one deadline definitely changes the equation. I'm sure a lot of GMs would have liked it to be August 15th. We've heard that, and I think it'd be ideal if there's one. In this case, I don't think it mattered. Could the Blue Jays have waited till the deadline for the Stroman trade? Yeah, but at the same time, hey, maybe the Mets would have moved on from that. You mentioned fractured relationship earlier. We talked about it with Stroman at length after his trade. We know there's been some bad blood there between Sanchez and the front office with his finger issues over these last couple of years. This is also a way for this front office to move forward. It's a new, who's left? Justin Smoke? Yeah, and Devin Just, Travis and if Devin he ever Travis. comes back. Yeah. And Justin Smoke is one great individual. I think we all know him well enough to and say so that. So Travis if he's and, right. Yeah, and, right. and, and, and they're moving <laughs> forward with their people. Yeah. Uh, it is official, by the way. The Jays have completed the trade. It is only Derek Fisher in return for Joe Biagini, Aaron Sanchez, and Cal Stevenson. One thing that I, and listen, uh, Ross Atkins is speaking in a conference call right now. We're not able to listen to that because we're live on the air. <laughs> However, we will get some clips from that and we'll turn them over so that you guys can hear them. Arash Madani tweeting out as he's listening to this conference call and participating and says, uh, Ross Atkins says Aaron Sanchez is, quote, driven to be a starter. If that's the case, does that change what Aaron Sanchez is worth to this team? Could that be a motivating factor to trade him now because you don't see him as a starter? Or that his value, you know, as a reliever, as some people were suggesting in the media going into the deadline, could that play a factor in why he was dealt today? Well, I'm a, I wonder from Houston's perspective, because Aaron made the comment in his goodbye little gathering with the media in mm -hmm. Kansas City there, I, I see myself as a starter. Mm -hmm. Now, could he be a reliever for Houston for the final two months, or is he a back end of the rotation starter who then shifts to the bullpen late September or into the playoffs? And given that Garrett Cole is a free agent at the end of the year, Zach Granke, we know. I mean, Houston did some work today. Yeah, they, <laughs> they did. And they do work every year yeah, now. Yeah. They could go load management on right. this yeah, if they, they wanted. Could load manage. <laughs> so, so does Sanchez maybe slot in as a back end of the rotation starter next year should Garrett Cole move on, given the fact that Houston has so much money sunk into its, into its rotation? Maybe, maybe the Blue Jays just, I don't want to say threw their arms up, but said we've done what we can here. Um, and this relationship is somewhat beyond repair. Joe, you've said Aaron has shown signs of life. Fair, but it is also relative. And, and maybe they just needed to sever that cord. My fear, and I hate this, is that you never trade a guy for the sake of trading him. Like I was thinking about Stroman the other day. Imagine had they not moved Marcus, and everybody knew the writing was eventually on the wall. If Marcus knew he was here for the two final months of the season, what would his social media be like? What would he be saying after yeah. starts to the meet? Like, you, you, you have to, and this, this bothers me if this is any part of the thought process, yet somehow, some way, I understand it. You have to reclaim the control of the narrative if you're this front office. You don't make moves for PR purposes, but you're the ones running this team, and whether it's internal or external, and most importantly, it's your clubhouse, you have got to be perceived at the very least, and it would be much better if it's the reality, as, as you being the ones in control. Right. 
And well, it has looking to at our, our Twitter mentions, they never had the control of the narrative. But if that was the case, they should have traded Stroman two months ago. But that's why I was I was going to say immediately, like, it has to be the clubhouse that you're talking right. about. Right. Because the they're not has... winning the PR battle. No. We can put up the megaphone that we had earlier. How well did the Jays do at the, at the deadline? It's not going well. We can go through all of our Twitter mentions. It's not going well. Like, this has to be about reestablishing control of that clubhouse and hand, you know, handing it over to the kids, which we have seen and granted a tiny sample size for these kids, but they all seem like they're way more mature than we even thought knowing they're sons of Hall of Famers. We keep hearing that handing the kids over, handing the keys over to the kids. Yes, it's their clubhouse now. Yeah. Would it be their clubhouse if someone with the personality of Marcus Stroman is still around? I don't think so. That's why these things had to be done. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about Aaron Sanchez in that clubhouse, but I think Again, this documented history with the relationship with the front office. I'm sure they were. He's not going to extend here. He wasn't going to sign an extension here, and nor was Stroman. So you might as well move him on. I would say when you can sell high. I'm just not so sure they sold high. We'll have to give Derek Fisher some time. He's only had a cup of coffee. Yeah, but Joe, I mean, baseball people aren't stupid around the league. They're aware. Yep. Maybe desperation is a bit too extensive a word, a little hyperbolic, but they're aware of the Jays' need to trade these guys. And want. That inhibits the value somewhat, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Talking about raising these kids in a culture, who's going to pitch for this team every five days? <laughs> like, like, if we're yeah. talking about having a winning environment, like, it could get ugly. That's a fair question, and it's hard to answer right now because my answer to, be, to you would be Thomas Pannone, Sean Reed Foley, Jacob Wagesback, Trent Thornton. Mm -hmm. The list goes on, but this is all about accumulating talent. That's what they've been doing now for a few years. Yeah. And when you accumulate all of this talent, you hope some of it pans out and becomes a good big league starter for you, or you get to a point that you've accumulated enough talent. You talked about all the shortstops. Yes, and that's a great problem to have, a bunch of shortstops in your minor league system. And so much talent that now you can package some of those for a major league starter. Going to be hard, right, to sign a free agent starting pitcher, ace, yeah. to the Toronto Blue Jays. It doesn't happen very often. But when you have enough talent in the minor leagues that you've accumulated, and you now can package that. For maybe if it's a guy from a lower budget team like the Rays or someone that's in his third or fourth year, he's arbitration eligible, and that team can't afford to pay him that six or eight or ten million. That's when they can make a package available for that. I think that's where you're going more so than going out and signing a free agent. And speaking to that, Gregor Chisholm was just pointing out that the 14 years of control now turns into 42 years of control. And that's the new payroll parameters. Shout out to anyone who remembers that infamous line from Alex Anthopoulos. <laughs> so there's, if you're looking for the silver lining amidst the storm clouds that have brewed here at deadline day for the Jays. Timing's key too though. You're yeah. talking about all this talent. Well, it's not going to be this year and it's not going to be next year, but when you're looking into the future, that's what they're looking for, yes. right? When you're talking Without about those controllable years. Making the move and when is that? You mentioned, is it this off season? Is it next off season? When you can go out and get those people or when you can make those deals? Well, I'm gonna start calling you Dr. Siddle with that chicken scratch. You had about 30 names written down of guys who could potentially pitch for this team, but I couldn't read one of those words. You were rhyming them off. That's me for me But, but if you have about But if you have about 40 arms and six of them work out some way somehow, that's the equivalent of having 20 arms and having three of them work out. You're, in a way, guys, playing the percentage game here. You have to. Right? You're hoping that out of this mass of humanity, uh, more than if the mass was smaller, work out. And you know why you have to do that? Ryan Barucki. Right. Yeah, we all penciled him into the rotation this year and then he finally came back and we're hoping for that next year and he's out again with an elbow. Right. That's why you need a lot of bodies.